Big Fluff. Hello, world. It's Stephanie Smart, and I am here to tell you. that I know some shit. Exotica. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Murphy. And I'm Stephanie Smar. And this is Stephanie Knows Some Shit. The edition, London edition, Joel, which is why <laughs> we're just going to get it out because I was like, Joel, does my sound sound any better? And he's like, yeah, just a little bit. I am on my cell phone because I... Do not have great internet in the old UK. Yes. Yeah, it's very... I'm very excited that we've gone international. You know, we're only a few months into the podcast and we're already... We're abroad. We're abroad. And it's, it's very exciting. I love England. So, like, I'm very, very excited to, to get into this new market. I hope you're walking around with a, a Stephanie Knows Some Shit shirt and merch and just telling everybody about the I show. I actually print... I printed out 600 flyers before we left and I've just been pasting them on um, like I've been on the tube a lot. So Ooh. I just put like a little one there. They're really against it, but I do did make the posters look like we're a Broadway musical. So they do fit in to a certain degree. Awesome. And are you you're minding the gap, right? When you're on I the tube? I always mind the gap. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> so I have taken every form of transportation, I feel like, in the past week. So I thought today I would talk about traveling and maybe some mistakes that I feel as though I have made in this past week. Forgetting your AirPods? Is that one? <laughs> For, like forgetting my AirPods. Also, if this episode, everybody, if we just go dark all of a sudden and you're like, where'd she go? My phone died because I am the irresponsible of one of the two of us. And <laughs> I and then I have my Bose headphones, but or like Dre headphones. I don't know who makes them. Um, but right now, only the left ear is working. And I was like, that sounds kind of sketch. Like, we'll just so we're like back to the days of the old wired headphones. That's exciting. It is exciting. But I really wanted to talk about travel because something happened to me. Um, that I never thought would make such a difference in three days of travel. Like one thing that I did to fly for one day affected three days. And like, there's just some things and tips and little secrets and all this stuff that I want to tell people about, because I don't want you to make the mistake that I did. Yeah. And I, I'm very curious about this because I haven't traveled since COVID. So like, I don't even know. Oh, Joe, let's just start there. Yeah, right. Let's start there because you haven't traveled. Not on a plane. I, I, like I haven't gotten on a I plane. Feel, well, since, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, not that not that Joel doesn't travel. He does not. He's not just a voice, everybody. He's a real man. <laughs> I'm, a, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a human boy. I made a wish. He's a human boy. <laughs> he's got a house. He makes a wish every day and he gets out of his house. Yeah, exactly. Um, but. But so this huge mistake that I made, and I didn't even think about it. I booked my flight for three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Okay. So and three o'clock p.m. Well, I'm curious too because now, well, let's go through all of this because you live in Maine. So are you? Where are you flying out of? Like where? What? Boston. Is, okay, so you travel to Boston to fly. That makes total I go sense. To Boston. Was that Logan? Is that the Logan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've flown into there. Um. Yeah, that's my bitch. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that, mother. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh my God. But I have, I honestly, so I grew up in Logan airport more or less. And I know that sounds weird, but your mom's a flight attendant. My mom's a flight attendant. Yeah. So I was always at the airport. I'm so incredibly comfortable at the airport and I never do anything wrong. <laughs> so, you know, the stories that I'm not going to tell, I wasn't like trying to like smuggle anything into the UK. I just didn't realize when I booked my flight for 3 p.m., it meant that I got into London at like, I don't know, it was six. Whatever I did, Joel, I messed this whole thing up. No, or did I take? No, I flew at 3 p.m. I got into London at like 6 a.m. I don't know how this happened. And everybody's like, that timing doesn't make sense. Don't pay attention to the timing. Somehow 
I left when it was Sunday and then I got in when it was Monday and it was the same amount of light. And I just, I got so jet lagged, Joel. <laughs> I, I was so miserable. I almost turned around. I was like, I'm not cooking for my clients. I'm not doing anything. Like I, I have to go back home. I've got to recuperate. I need two weeks and then we'll try this again because it was the biggest failure. And I'm still not sleeping well. Two nights ago, I slept for about an hour and a half. I was up for like 18 hours. Last night I slept for two hours. Then I woke up and then I slept for another five hours, but I took NyQuil. Like, oh, talk about effing up a whole big thing. So my per- first piece of advice is like, I don't know. I don't know how to fix this, but I know that there's a way. Stay up for 36 hours. Sleep on your airplane, which is a red eye that gets in at six o'clock in the morning and then have yourself a day so you get yourself on track. But this one little mistake started off a like it was like a catalyst. It was like a spark for everything that could go wrong in my bowels, which is what exactly what happened. Not only did the stress of like traveling and leaving David and Bear for an extended amount of time really like have a huge effect on me. And we all know like your girl doesn't do stress so well. It has like a very physical effect on me. But I got into London and I'm like, do to do. I get to my hotel and I'm like, I'm so cute. I'm so British. Like, wow. And all of a sudden I was like, I don't feel so good. All right. Everybody's afraid of COVID. You know, so am I, whatever. Like old news, but <laughs> I get a 24 hour stomach bug. Ooh. Joel, there's single ply in this bathroom. It's, I'm puking. I, I'm, there's just, it was so bad. And I truly think it was because I mishandled, like I messed up my sleep. It was all terrible. My immune system was tired. And so I spent the first day in London um, in the bathroom. Not not how you want to start. That's definitely... Not how I wanted to start. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely going to put the a certain spin on the trip, I feel like. To... It <laughs> yeah. did. And I was very upset. And of course, I called David, bawling my eyes out. He's like, babe, it's okay. Like, this is going to pass. It passes once a month when this happens to you. And I'm like, I just want to be home. He was like, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Good luck. <laughs> Um, but that's a really big, important piece of advice. And traveling right now is very weird because since you haven't traveled, Joel, would you expect if you went to the airport that everybody would have masks on or no masks? Oh, well, I mean, (laughs) at this point in America, I expect everyone to not have masks on whenever possible. Nobody has masks on. Nobody wears masks. It's like going back. It's like you're right back into the of things you know like we're back in 2018 and we're all just maskless and just acting all cute and stuff so that part's definitely strange and to people who are like well but i want to wear a mask but i don't want people to look at you nobody gives a shit if you want to wear a mask more power to you wear the mask i wore a mask on the flight i was coming here for work i can't risk getting covid i don't care if paula from down the road is on the airplane being like she's such a hypochondriac like what a bitch like take that mask off i don't care paula why don't you have another glass of chardonnay <laughs> yeah i i'm still wearing masks like when i go out well, molly and i saw a movie this week and we i still wore a mask in the theater i'm still i'm still that nerd so yeah i say do Dude, it be be that nerd you know so people aren't masked but i got here i rapid tested for the past three days just i feel perfectly fine now the stomach flu went away and feel perfectly fine but you know it's like i did travel internationally nobody had a mask on i was fine coach because i bought the ticket so and that's a long you know, it's a whole thing that's a long, a long flight flight yeah but i just i just did the seattle flight which was only 45 minutes longer oh okay so i was like prepped and ready i also may or may not have taken a prescribed at a van which i thought was going to be awesome and it was just going to be exactly like um bridesmaids when <laughs> Fuku Madigi takes the out and makes the whole scene on the airplane and i just thought she was so lovable and it was hilarious and i was not i was just like blah instead you got the i was gonna say instead you got the scene from bridesmaids where they all have like food poisoning <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Instead, I'm saying it's happening in the middle of the street. (laughs) I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) 
And I wouldn't have thought, I would have thought it was food poisoning, but I didn't eat anything that would give me food poisoning. Like Hershey's chocolate did not give me food poisoning. Um, <laughs> like all, you know, like my airplane, like Doritos did not give me food poisoning. I was like, no, I've given myself this, which just says how strong the mind is. Um, but, but, you know, I just want to reiterate that to people because I, I'm a person who I've got my own insecurities and hangups, but when it comes to what people think of me, if I think I'm doing the right thing, I could give two shits. I'm like, you should be just fine with that. So if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. You are not going to offend me. If I wasn't traveling for work, I don't know if I would have worn a mask. I probably wouldn't have. I definitely would have gotten COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Are you like, I'm imagining because of like the history with your, your mom and everything, Are you pretty efficient in an airport? Like, cause I, I always had that because there was a while where I was traveling pretty regularly for work stuff that I was doing. And I kind of, you get into that rhythm of when you're going through security, you know, my shoes would be off. My stuff would be in a bin. Uh, And I would always kind of be surprised by the fact that you're in. Unpreparedness. Yes. That you're in. Yeah, you're in the travelers because you're in that line for so long and they tell you (laughs) for so long what's going to happen. And the people that wait until they are staring at the security guard to start taking their shoes off. They're like, do can I do I need to take my iPad out? Yes, you need to take your iPad out and put it in a separate bin. They've said it 70,000 times. Joe, my shoes are off. I'm wearing a sensible outfit. Yep. I have socks on because I don't want my feet to touch that wretched ground. Yep. I um, never have anything in my pockets. I have never set. I'm knocking on wood. Where's wood? <laughs> I have never set the security alarm off. It was a huge fear of mine as a child. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like... Because because you, this is my mom's place of work. Like, you you can't get in trouble. You set off that alarm. You have done wrong. And mother would be so mad at me. I assume I never have. It never happened. But I am a very efficient flyer. I'm a very efficient packer. That's not to say that my bag wasn't underweight. It was 61 pounds. I brought two suitcases. One was 61. The other one was a carry on. Um, but I, I fly tight. Yeah. I don't mess around. I want an aisle seat because I don't like, what if I really have to go to the bathroom? I can't be, I don't need to look at the window. You know what I mean? It's a cloud. I can look up in the sky at any given point. I can look over my two fellow travelers laps to see out the window. I'm good. Good on a window. See you, this is probably because you were raised on it too. It's just normal to you. I'm pretty good with flying, but I always wanted that window and I don't know why, but like mostly to watch taking off and landing because in my Mm -hmm. mind i needed to you know like somehow i'm gonna influence it or you know also joel you know because it is something so born into me but i think that if i was not such a like flying child i would be like i just paid so much money for this i want every ounce sucked out of this experience and i'm gonna sit in that one like god forbid i sit in the middle Oh, God. No, the, no, no. Especially on like, yeah, of an international flight like that. If you're stuck in the middle mm. for a long time. No, that's no mm. good. Mm-mm, I can't do that. I, yeah. I am a I am unstable on a good day. You can't stick me in a, in a middle seat. So I I do. Another thing that I do is I wait till um, the night before and they always have those hundred dollar upgrades for like, let's say you're flying Southwest and, you know, Southwest is just like cattle call. Like it's just free, a free for all. I don't even know how to explain it. I have a fear of not having enough overhead storage bin for my luggage. Yeah. I will pay a hundred dollars to ensure my comfort in having all of that so that I can board before the rest of people. Like I pay for that stuff. Yeah. And it doesn't give you a better seat. It just gives you, you get to board first. It gives, I board first and I get into that seat and I'm like, okay, now I can let go of this anxiety. Otherwise I'm just sitting there like shivering. Yeah. Um, no, I get that. But, but flying, flying's always been a super, super, super important part of my life. People say traveling, and I say flying because, like, I traveled all through um, college from Colorado to Boston, like every other weekend on a red eye that I would fly standby, and I always would get on a flight. Sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I'd go from Colorado to Minneapolis to Atlanta to Boston, or Colorado 
to Salt Lake, which is the opposite way to Atlanta to Boston. Like I've done it all. I've flown with dogs. I've flown <laughs> with children. Oh wow. I've flown as a chaperone to children. Like, I mean, that being said, they were like 17 and 18, but still I was their chaperone. I've done it. Yeah. I take it <laughs> seriously. And what it what do you like on a flight? Do you do you sleep? Do Nothing. you you don't I, do anything? I sleep. Okay. I I sleep typically. I fall asleep. And of course I didn't fall asleep on maybe I did fall asleep on the flight over here. I did that. I, the whole th- everything that I did was inefficient and wrong because <laughs> I decided to spend the morning before my flight at the beach, which is the most un like. I'm also like a morning flight, but a, David had to take me to the airport. David doesn't like when I have morning flights because I could cut it really, really close. It's all a mess, but we we got here. That's a good one too. Like how how early do you get to the airport? An hour and a half. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. For an international flight, two hours. Yeah. If I had my way, if I'm flying alone, I've cut it as close as an hour and ten minutes. And I do not suggest that. Yeah. I had one time and I think it was I wanna say it was an hour, but it was because I got stuck in traffic trying to get to the airport and I had that where like mm-hmm. the security had to help wave me through and we were the last people on the airplane that's that can be and joel were you a mess i i yeah the whole time i was convinced and this was the flight back so i was convinced that i was gonna be stuck in this city and not make it back home (laughs) yeah and you know what there was a chance i'm sure yeah, no, like they held it like they the you know, the flight attendants, I'm sure annoyed were standing at the door waiting for us to walk through and then shut the door and they took off like right after that. So, yeah, not great. Yeah. it's so no, God, we were going to go. So this was when I was still drinking and I had to go to Portland. And David and I drank the night before like a lot and my flight was leaving at 9 a.m. So I needed to be up by six to be out the door by seven. And I got out the door by 730, 745. I was the last one on the flight. It was a whole thing. I was hungover, if not still drunk. I get on the airplane. I look two seats over and one of my great friends, Scott, is on the airplane. (laughs) And he's like, he's like, Steph, are you okay?" And I was like, don't fucking talk to me and this is like a friend i've slept on his couch like i slept on his couch for like a month oh was that an amp was that a siren yeah it's a yeah there's a siren going off guys this this is how good we're doing this podcast tonight (laughs) um but so yeah scott was on the flight and i was like i can't even think i was like foaming at the mouth so i've made my mistakes flying um but not really tra- like getting there. And I, that's another thing, Joel, is I don't think people, people always talk about what happens when you get to your destination. It's like, that's great, but we all have our own experiences. Flying is pretty much like, not many people talk about it in a positive light. Like we all bitch about it. Like, oh, my flight got canceled, the yada, 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 all those things that suck about flying. But Nobody really talks about the process of getting to the place that you need to go, like what makes it the easiest way. I don't drink anymore, but even when I was a drinker, um, I didn't really like, I was never one of those people who was like, I'm going to have like three beers at the bar and like Mm -hmm. do all this stuff. Like, I'm good. I'm good. I just want to get it it, to me. It's another thing where I just need to be on my best behavior because, you know, I'm on an airplane. Which leads me to another thing. David and I used to go to this place and get sushi. It was like half half price sushi on Sundays. It was phenomenal, if not terrible. <laughs> and one of our favorite servers, oh God, what was her name? Jane, I think. It's something with a J. She was this beautiful little Japanese girl, and she was very, very spicy caliente. <laughs> and one day she was like, before when where she went in japan she was she was like i used to be a flight attendant she she and she looks at and she goes i hated the aluminum tube and we were like really good point it is nothing but an aluminum tube yeah yeah that, that we're just trying to get there on um but that's my like that's my one thing i just don't want my friends who listen to this to to 
to make that mistake. Don't, don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. We have to ask. It's the podcast where we answer the question, are you going to eat that? What will you leave behind? Why get out of bed? Will you be our neighbor? I'm Marty. And I'm Jonathan. We're two hosts. Infinite Universes. We, we have, have to ask. ask. New interviews every Tuesday. Find us on iTunes or online at wehavetoask.com or with the other great podcasts on the Peak Sloth Network at peaksloth.com. We should probably mention too, this is like it's 10 o'clock at night that we're recording this now for you. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is not early, but I am dedicated to giving the people what they are not asking for, which is travel tips. <laughs> but is it like. I don't know. I mean, you talked about the masks, but like, I don't know. Does it feel business as usual, like flying now? Is it absolutely? It, yeah, it just feels like the old days. Like it, it doesn't feel any yeah. different. And now that I've gotten to London, feels like the old days. Nothing's changed. Just sexy, beautiful people walking around everywhere. Like just free balling it, basically. That's the best way I can say it. I just feel That's like what you're going with. <laughs> We're just free ball in the world right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you know, yeah, but- th- this is slightly off topic, too, but I because you were mentioning all the snacks and everything, too. I do feel like while you're in London, I, I think we need to do a future episode where we talk about British snacks. I think like now they that you're there. They are. Yeah. And all, all I eat are snacks. You know that I'm not a meal eater. I'm a snacker. Well, right. So right now I have. Hold on. I'll walk over there. I have an apple, two oranges, four bottles of water, high sweet chicken, McCoy's crisps, potato chips. I have a caramel stroop waffle. I have sherbet lemon hard candies because sometimes I get a little clumped in the middle of the night and I need a hard candy to make me to stop coughing. And then I went to Borough Market the other day and I bought four different types of olives because I was like I'm here for a really long time so I was like olives don't go bad so if I don't eat them in like a night I can eat them later and then my friend Jamie gave me half a brownie from Ojolengi so I ate that too (laughs) so I'm like not doing great on the on the snacks but I'm not failing as miserably as I typically typically do um I've also I'm here and I've got some friends that are here too and we go out to eat and, you know, everybody, you know, when you go out to eat, like nobody ever orders, maybe you do, but sometimes vegetables like go unforeseen when you're really excited about something else. And I'm always the one that's like, we'll also have the broccoli, the <laughs> cucumber and tomato salad. We'll have the, the, the wok fried green beans and like anything with vegetables. I feel like Molly is good for that. She'll usually. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten better. I don't know. And then I was just at lunch with my friends and I did this and I was like, are they like talking about me behind the back being like, Oh, look at her trying to be a martyr and eat her vegetables. (laughs) But but I'm here for so long that I have to make sure that we're consuming them. Um, London is very big on the chickpea. I can see that. Yeah. They love a chickpea here. I I like a chickpea. I don't love a chickpea, but I'm not going to bitch about the chickpeas. You can do Um, a lot with them. We will. We will do an episode about all things British food because so far it's been pretty damn tasty. That's good. Yeah. I still, if you can, while you're there, figure out what pudding is because I'm very confused (laughs) as to what they I told you. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, I still have that book, Pride and Puddings, yeah. instead of Pride and Prejudice, which is a great movie. I just watched it recently to in, in anticipate. Somehow I thought that in pre- preparation for my trip to London, I would watch Pride and Prejudice and my whole life would come together. <laughs> and I'm not far off. The Keira Knightley one, it was so good. Oh my God, it's so good. Also, um, uh, possibly in solidarity with you, we, we bought some snacks the other day and uh, Molly bought some Jaffa cakes that they had at this like little market. That. So so we do have those in the Thank house. Thank you. Which also, like, that does make me curious, too, because you like you said, you are there for a long time and I know you're there for work. But like, do you are you doing any cooking? Like you're basically living out of a hotel, right? So it's all I'm living out of a hotel, but I'm cooking for clients. So 
I am cooking, but then I'm coming back to a hotel and having to feed myself out of my mini fridge. How does that work that you're cooking for clients? Because I have clients that travel oh. so much. And sometimes I get the opportunity. Like we used to, if people followed me for a long time, I used to spend a ton of time in Napa. Um, if clients go somewhere cool and need help and ask, of course I'm going to go. Are you serious? Like, I love traveling. David doesn't like traveling as much as I do. So you have, so, but you have clients in, in London right now or what, how is in it? In London right now that are, that are Massachusetts based or that, California based. Depends on how you put it. That's really cool. Yeah. So you, yeah. and you go over to their place and do it or how does that work? I go over to their place just because they have a kitchen and everything. And it's just like how I do my job in Boston. Oh, nice. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. It's super, super, super fun. And like such an incredible opportunity. I'm walking around my hotel room like we're not recording a podcast. I almost just turned <laughs> on the bathroom sink. <laughs> sit, sit down, Stephanie. Sit down. Focus. Okay. <laughs> focus my adhd just was like which i don't have but like my just attention just went um it's it's but it's it's pretty easy um the ingredients are different here lots of Uh, chickpeas the words the lot so many fucking chickpeas (laughs) um the wording is differently but it's a really positive challenge so and the other thing is that um I am going to go to Notting Hill one of these days and they've got a place called, I just Googled it. Not like I was Googling something while on the phone with all of you <laughs> books, books for cooks, Oh, which is a store featuring thousands of cookbooks. Oh, that's made for plus you. Yeah. A sto- plus a cafe preparing book recipes and a kitchen for classes. Oh, that's yeah. That sounds amazing. Everybody, 2027, York, Maine, America, books for cooks. It'll be my store, though. Such a good idea. It really is. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. But, so I'm, I'm able to see some stuff like, you no, know, the private chef life is like the best life in the entire world because I am able to go out and do stuff. Like just because I'm cooking doesn't mean that I have to be with people like all the time you know what i mean i've got a lot of freedom i'm able to do a lot of things i am probably going to go bankrupt like remarkably quickly though. <laughs> so if anybody has a uh whatchamacallit for some sponsorships you guys just hit us up because your girl is going to be hurting when she gets home so uh, like do you have uh obviously you're working but like are there things besides this amazing bookshop like do you have things that you're gonna try to see before you go is there some kind of like bucket list or like goals list of of london type mm-hmm. places um that's kind of an interesting question i'm so excited about everything that currently it doesn't matter what i see i actually just heard or read this really great quote from Anne of Green Gables, which I know you're like, excuse me. <laughs> this literally came from Anne of Green Gables. And the quote is, it's been my experience that you can nearly always enjoy things if you make up your mind firmly that you will. And I have like taken this as my life mantra. Like what that means to me is that you can enjoy any situation within context, everybody don't get, be like, Oh, but what if this happens? But you know, you can enjoy any situation as long as you make up your mind before going into it, that you are going to have the best effing time of your life. And since I quit drinking, since I got my mind clear, since I got all the bullshit out of my life, that's how and like literally got the shit out of my life after I got over the stomach bug. I have been approaching London. Like I will enjoy every day. So everything that I see, I saw the tower. I walked over the tower bridge yesterday. I don't know what that is. I went to all these places. I can't tell you where they were because (laughs) I don't know where I was, but I can ask my friends. Um, We're just, I'm just really enjoying myself. That's awesome. That, but I miss, I mean, that being said, and I just have to say, and I don't even think he'll listen to this, but like, it's hard, 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 
hard being away from David. Um, but he understands that I might be resentful if I didn't have this experience. So he's like, go, go get it. Like, go do that. He understands. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, no, it, it seems like a really cool opportunity. And it, yeah, I'm always impressed with your ability because again it's you know sort of the way you approach things of like i don't know an opportunity came up and it seems like this all was pretty quick that you decided to oh go. yeah yeah oh yeah i made up my mind what was it two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago yeah which yeah, yeah. You, oh you, no 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 yeah. and i've been here for a week so there was probably only a week or two that i let anybody know know that that this was what i was going to be doing yeah, I'm pretty sure when you and I talked, it was you were like, so this is what's up. I'm going to be leaving in 10 days. So we were like, and you were like, excuse me. And I was like, yeah, I know we've got this really good thing going on, but I would just like to rock us for a little bit and I'm going to go away for a while. But I can use my phone, which leads me to a thing because I don't know how long we've been recording for now. Um, it should be very clear to everybody that I am not competing on Top Chef because they take your phone away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to disappoint, but I will. I am on the lookout for them. So. Make yeah. sure to keep posted. Oh, shoot. OK, now I'm getting distracted in my phone. My phone just hit the red. So we should probably wrap this up. Um. So basically what I'm telling everybody, I've already told you my horror. I've told you two, the, really the only two horror flying show, stories that I have, which is the time that I showed up at the airport, basically shit faced with like a minute to get on the flight. I was told that I wasn't going to make it on. And I was like, watch me, sir. Um, and then we have the fucking poop gate that happened this past weekend. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> so I think I can spare you guys from another nasty story of how everything went wrong and I somehow came out on top. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, totally. I think we're good. Yeah, if I can just a couple things as we're wrapping up. Uh, one, Ooh. obviously, just yeah, everybody. Uh, obviously, this episode sounds a little different because you're you don't have your microphone. You're on a phone. But I hope uh, people still enjoy it because, again, we we were trying to scramble and we wanted to keep bringing shows. So this was sort of the best uh, solution. And, this was our yeah. And we're we will go back to my computer. Yes. And yeah, and we'll, we're going to be trying to have you as much as possible the next few weeks. There's probably going to be a few weeks where we might have some some guests on filling in. But we were doing our best to to have you as often as possible. So I just wanted to uh, make people aware of that. Uh, and also just as we're wrapping up. Uh, if I can just say to people that like uh, we we love all the reviews and comments we've been getting and we could definitely use maybe some more uh, iTunes or Spotify reviews would definitely help. And I just wanted to shout out someone. Uh, Poor Girl Kitchen has been on our Instagram saying what she eats every time she listens to the show. Every time we post an episode she'll write poor girl kitchen yeah Who is poor? do we know do we know if poor girl kitchen has a name that we can shout out or do should we do that next time we talk i don't know so yeah poor girl kitchen when you're listening to this episode in addition to telling us what you're eating also tell us your name so we can continue to give a shout out but i've been really enjoying it that every week uh she'll leave a comment saying what she's eating while she's listening or like what she's cooking while she's eating or listening to the show and it's oh my delightful. gosh i do know who this is car grace okay all right care or car we'll figure out follow back i follow them now um we are so grateful for your support and trust me everybody when you do leave these reviews and stuff you get we sing your praises on yeah. the show yeah and, it, and it, you don't have to you don't have to buy our praises we sing them because <laughs> we really mean them yeah yeah no it one it's just it's really nice for us to see the feedback and we both really appreciate it but it also does help uh promote the show and make people aware of the show so yeah. all, all of help that it, help us grow all of that we are super grateful for so thank you to poor girl kitchen and everyone else and uh if you would yeah like your praises sung then you know leave a leave a thing on instagram or write a review on apple podcasts or whatever you can spotify spotify we, we appreciate it more than you guys know we really do 
Uh, and we appreciate you, Stephanie, uh, still finding a way to make this work so that we can still have episodes. Uh, and yeah. yeah, it's nice to it's nice to catch up. So nice to catch up with everybody. I will be back at ten. It's ten forty eight now. I will be back to chat maybe in the next couple weeks. Yes. Yeah. And. And we have some stuff pre-recorded with us too. So we, we do. Have, yeah. So we have some stuff in the can and we will have you from London as much as possible. And hopefully next time I talk to you, your, your sleep is better. <laughs> so I hope so. I really hope so. That's perfect. All right. Thanks, well, Joel. well, thank you so much. I think that's going to do it for us. That's going to do it for us. So again, everybody, thank you for listening. We'll have our audio back in shape by the time I get back to the Americas. And for everybody out there, don't forget it. You've got this. Stephanie Knows Some Shit is hosted by Stephanie Smar and me, Joel Murphy, and produced by me. If you enjoyed the show, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, and instead of a review, tell us about a meal that you ate or made recently. We'd love to read about it. In a world where people watch movies. I think I'm gonna watch a movie. Sometimes they don't like what they see. I don't like this movie. But sometimes they look for the silver lining. Wait a second. I like this part of this movie. Joel and Andy do that work for you. The Silver Linings Playback. I like this part of this podcast where they tell me the part of the movie I like. Every Monday on the Peak Sloth Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcasts.